Hazel, where are you right now? Huh? Where? It's my women's group meeting today. I'm out with them. We're all meeting today for lunch at an Italian restaurant. Why do you ask? You're out with friends? I told you Rebecca only had a half day of school today. I told you she was coming home at lunch. I asked you to be home to let her in the house and make lunch for her, didn't I? You said you'd be home. That's why I made a doctor's appointment for today. Oh, that was today. <laughs> I'm sorry. It completely slipped my mind. Rebecca couldn't get in the house because the door was locked. So she was outside crying until one of the neighbors noticed and contacted me. I'm not done with my doctor's appointment, so can you please rush home and get Rebecca? What are you talking about? You know I can't do that now. We just got sat down at the restaurant. I can't leave now. But it's your granddaughter. Hazel, please. I'm at the hospital right now. This appointment is important to me. Isn't there any way you can get Rebecca for me? When we're done eating, I'll go get her. You said the neighbor is with her right now. So she'll be fine for a couple hours. I don't know why you just can't give her a key. She can let herself in and stay by herself for a few hours. She's only six. I can't leave her by herself. And it's not the neighbor's job to look after her until you finish eating with your friends. Besides, she has to eat lunch and get ready for her swimming lesson this afternoon. She can't wait until you're done eating. You're being pretty stubborn about this, aren't you? Besides, you're pregnant right now. You're too soon. A woman as pregnant as you should be at home. Not out running around doing whatever she wants. All of this happened because you weren't home. So don't blame me. You made your bed. Now you've got to lie in it. Oh, I'm at this doctor's appointment because I'm pregnant. You said you'd be there for Rebecca today. Please, just go get her. I can't. Look, I'll tell you this just so you know. This women's meeting at the restaurant today. I'm doing it for you. For me? That's right. These are women from your neighborhood. We have to be nice to them in case something ever happens. It would be terrible if you ever needed help and none of your neighbors liked you enough to help you out. It's called Building Rapport. I'm doing this for your benefit. Trust me, I know you're not good at talking to people. You should be thanking me right now for doing this for you. It's rude for me to be using my cell phone right now, so I'm turning it off. So don't message me anymore. Paige, are you there? I know this is a little sudden, but we're going camping tomorrow. Pardon me? I'm having lunch with my sister and her husband right now. They said they went not long ago. You know, to that new campsite that just opened up. New campsite? You mean that one in the next city? Yeah, yeah, that one. My sister said it was fantastic. When she told me, I just had to make reservations. I couldn't help myself. I see. But I'm sorry, we can't go. The baby is due any time now. I want to stay in town close to the hospital. Ah, who cares if your baby is due soon? Pregnancy isn't a sickness. Don't use your pregnancy as an excuse to sit at home and do nothing all day. 
Andy will drive us. I know my son's a good driver. You trust your husband's driving, don't you? It's not that. Driving there isn't the problem. You can go with Andy and Rebecca if you want. Just the three of you. I'll sit this one out. No way! I planned this as a family trip. Me and my son's family. If you're not there, there's no point in going. Besides, I made the reservation for four people, and since it was last minute, I can't get my money back. So stop packing. We're going camping! Hazel, please answer your phone. You have to come back and get me. You can't leave me behind at a coffee shop like this. Well, we had no choice, did we? You were complaining the whole time that you didn't want to go. I wasn't going to listen to that for two days straight. Ugh. Besides, we're getting on the highway now anyway. Coming back to pick you up would just be a pain. You can walk home or call a taxi. You did that right in front of Rebecca, too. She was yelling for you to stop hurting Mommy. And I saw her crying looking out the back window as you drove off. If this incident causes her trauma, are you going to take responsibility for that? You pulled me out of the house against my will and put me in the car. Rebecca was crying when you did that, too. And then we go only about 20 miles away... You stop at a coffee shop parking lot? And you pull me out of the car and drive off? You know how small I am compared to you. I couldn't fight back even if I wasn't nine months pregnant. It's not even how bad all that is. It's that Andy didn't even try to stop you. Both of you must be crazy. We're just teaching you a lesson. You need to learn manners. Manners? Yes. It appears your parents didn't raise you very well, did they? If they're not going to teach you, I'll just have to do it myself. You need to learn to respect your elders. Hazel, this isn't about me respecting or not respecting my elders. What do you think a pregnant mother's first priority is? Is to protect her baby. It's to avoid anything that might not be good for her baby. You have a son. You know this, right? What would I do if I went into labor or something happened to me out in the middle of nowhere? There's no hospital anywhere near that campsite. That's why I didn't want to go. Ah, how many times are you going to say that? Take responsibility for your own actions. If something happened to you or your baby at the camp... It wouldn't be the campsite's fault, and it wouldn't be mine. It would be your own fault. This has nothing to do with us, so it shouldn't affect our lives. The only reason you didn't want to come on this trip is because you don't think you're a good mother. You don't think you can protect your kids properly, do you? If you are not confident you can protect your own kids, that says to me that you're just not a good mother. <laughs> You've got it wrong. Being able or not able to protect them is one thing. But what a mother should do first is to not expose her children to danger in the first place. And the fact that Andy went along with your plan to abandon me just proves to me that he's a useless husband. And he's left me no choice. Did you just call my son a useless husband? Are you telling me he's not? I can't believe you have the nerve to say something like that to me about my own son. Your parents did raise you poorly. They must have been really overprotective. <laughs> That's why kids today are so weak and delicate, are scared of the slightest things. I've got it. I know what I'm going to do about you. 
I'm going to tell everyone in the neighborhood that you're a terrible wife. Yep, that's it. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> huh? Well, it's true, isn't it? You're against anything Andy or I say. You don't respect your elders or your husband. You even speak poorly about your husband. I'm gonna show them the text where you said he's a useless husband. Soon, no one in the neighborhood will like you, and it'll all be your own fault. That's what you get. Yup. You're gonna have a miserable time living in that neighborhood from now on. Well, I suppose you guys should be arriving at the campsite soon, huh? Huh? You've arrived at the campsite entrance, haven't you? Well, yes. We're coming up to the parking area soon. It's such a beautiful area. And I hear the view is even better when you get in. If you wouldn't have complained so much, you could have been here with us. We could have had a wonderful time together. No, I don't think we could ever have a wonderful time together. And I know you won't be enjoying your trip now that I'm not there. Huh? Oh, we've arrived. Don't contact us anymore until we get back. Even if you go into labor, don't message us. Look behind you! <laughs> huh? Huh? Hey, there's someone behind us that looks a lot like Jeremy. That's right. That's right? Why would your father be at a place like this? About that new campsite, my father owns it. What? I thought he owned a golf course. He does, but recently he's expanded into other leisure facilities. Well, I didn't know that. Wait a minute. He's not letting us through the gate. Well, of course not. I told my dad everything you did. What do you mean what I did? I'm talking about you abandoning a woman nine months pregnant at a coffee shop and continuing on your vacation without her and left her with no way to get home? I told you I couldn't go camping because my baby was due at any time. What you did was worse than going without me. You dragged me with you just to abandon me? I knew my dad would be angry if he found out I went camping this late in my pregnancy. And I knew he'd get mad at you and Andy for taking me along. So what? Are you trying to say you were protecting Andy and I from your father? That's exactly what I'm saying. I know you planned this trip just for a change of pace. That's why I told you to take Andy and Rebecca and go have fun without me. I figured if my dad asked me why my family left me alone, I'd just tell him that I told you guys to go have some fun. I thought that way he couldn't really get angry at anyone. Well, I don't know if that would have worked or not, but... You went and did this to me, so I told him everything. Talk to your father right away. Andy has already gotten out of the car to talk to your father, but he doesn't seem to want to listen. He looks furious. If you speak to him, you can get him to calm down, and all this will be resolved right away. Just tell him we didn't abandon you. Tell him you got out and told us to go ahead without you. <laughs> you want me to do what? You made Andy stop the car. And you got out and physically pulled me out of the car against my will. Paige, come on. It wasn't that bad. It was just a little joke. And what if I had fallen on my stomach when you pulled me out of the car? If you would have hurt my baby, would you call that a little joke, too? Ah, oh, you're so thick-headed. You've got to relax a little and let things go. Otherwise, you'll be miserable your whole life. I'm your mother-in-law, but you're treating me like I'm some random stranger. 
I'm allowed to do things like that to you. We're related. Look, if you don't talk to your father and get him to calm down about this, I can see there's going to be bad blood between our families for a long time. After what you did to me, don't even use the word family when referring to you and me ever again. It gives me goosebumps when you do. What? I'm not telling my dad you didn't do what you did. Oh, and tell Andy I'm divorcing him. Divorce? Oh, you've got to be kidding. I'm not kidding. He didn't even try to stop you today. How do you think any of us could possibly live together after what happened today? I've had all I can take of you and your useless son. What are you talking about? You're a mother. You can't get divorced. You have kids. What'll happen to them? My children? What do you care? You only care about your granddaughter when it's convenient for you. You leave a six-year-old girl locked outside and go off to eat lunch with your friends. And it's not like Andy cares about his daughter either. He only spends time with her if he's not out drinking with his friends. And if there's no sports on TV. I can raise my children by myself, like I've been doing this whole time anyway. Do you think I need Andy? If you do, you're crazy. Oh, but a divorce will cause huge problems. Where are we going to live? Andy and I will have no place to live. You wouldn't make us leave. That's right. You'll have no place to live. That house we're living in now is my dad's. Andy can't touch it in the divorce. And if we're divorced... Why on earth would I let him and my ex-mother-in-law keep living with me? <laughs> so obviously I'll be kicking you two out. You can't kick us out on such short notice. It's not fair. Are you that heartless? Have you forgotten all the things I've done for you? I remember all the things you've done to me, but I can't think of anything you've ever done for me. So, how's it going with my useless husband? Well, that's... He still hasn't come back to the car yet. Maybe you can't see from the car, but he's down on his knees begging right now. Why don't you try getting out and talking to my dad? I'm sure he'll love to speak to you, too. Huh? I'm not going over there. Please, Paige, do something. I apologize for everything I've done in the past. I'm sorry. Your dad just came over to the car and took the keys out. He said he's taking Rebecca back with him, and he told me and Andy never to go back to that house of his. What are we supposed to do now? He took the keys. We can't drive back. I think you should take responsibility for what you've done. Isn't that what you always tell me to do? Look on the bright side. You're much better at communicating than I am. I'm sure you've got lots of friends to help you out, right? Why don't you get them to help you out this time? You know, all of those friends from your women's group. After I called my dad, he had one of the campsite staff members pick me up and drive me back to my house. After speaking to them at the campsite, my dad made Andy and my mother-in-law leave the camp property, and he brought my daughter Rebecca back safely to the house. Rebecca was so happy to see me that she started crying, and I did too. We both cried as we hugged. Somehow, Andy and his mother eventually made it back to the house, even without the car they drove up in. They both begged me to forgive them and to let them back into the house. But after what they did, neither me nor my father would allow them back into the house. Andy also begged me not to divorce him, and he fought it every step of the way. But even he couldn't bear being the target of my father's anger. So Andy finally gave in, and we finalized the divorce. 
since my father and I had kicked them out, they didn't have a place to live. I heard they were staying in a cheap, run-down motel for a while, up until the divorce was finalized. As for where they are right now, though, I don't know. There's a rumor going around that there are two homeless people who set up camp down by the river, though. As for me, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. For now, I've moved back in with my parents, so they can help me take care of the new baby. Now that I think about it, raising a newborn baby and an elementary school student is a little much for just one person. But just thinking about having that useless husband or that useless mother-in-law around would be 100 times worse. That's why I'm so happy my parents were there to save me from them and help me out now. Hey babe, I tried calling, but your phone went straight to voicemail, so I'm guessing it's dead or you're busy or something. Anyway, if you get this message, I just wanted to let you know that I finished work early today. My boss overstaffed the place, so I said I'd go home to even out the numbers. So I'm heading home, and I guess I'll see you when I get there. Or if you're out, I'll see you when you get there. <laughs> oh, also, because we've got, like, the whole day, I might have booked a little surprise for us to enjoy. It is an overnight stay, so you'll have to pack a bag, but it'll definitely be worth it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. You don't need to worry about the kids, I've asked my mom to watch them for tonight. So, it'll just be me and you. Something I can't wait for, because it's definitely been a while since we've been alone. Well, let me know when you've read this message. We've got to get to the place for check-in before 8, so if we can get off as quickly as possible, that'll be good. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Andrew, how dare you do that? Do you even understand how rude you just were? Andrew? I'm the rude one? Well, I'm so sorry. I'll just let you get back to cheating on me then. What? Well, I mean... Look, it's not like I planned for this to happen. I especially didn't think you'd barge in on us like you did, which was extremely rude and awkward, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. Next time I'll knock and let you know that I'll wait for you downstairs, shall I? Maybe I'll even bring a bottle of wine or something so we can all have a big laugh about it, yeah? Geez, there's no reason for you to be so sarcastic. I'm not trying to be rude to you, am I? I think I'm allowed to feel angry and upset at the fact that I just discovered my wife cheating on me. Why should you feel upset? You never buy me the things I want or take me to the places I want to go. It was kind of selfish of you, don't you think? Plus, you are like... Never spontaneous or romantic for me, especially since we had George. And life like that can get kind of boring. What? I buy you lots of things that you want. New clothes, jewelry, if I can afford it, then I'll get it for you. I've also taken you to lots of places and days out and weekend getaways and the like. Just because I can't afford to buy you the super expensive things that you want or take you to the most exclusive and expensive places, but I like to think that what I do do for you is enough. We can't afford brands like Louis Vuitton or Gucci, and we definitely can't afford holidays to the Seychelles and places like Dubai or Bora Bora, like you want to go to. Especially with George to look after now, and th think about in all of our plans, having children is expensive, but it's definitely worth it. As for being spontaneous and romantic, I'm always asking you if you like to go away for little mini breaks, and I'm always buying you little gifts like flowers or chocolates and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's not really what I want, is it? Maybe if you actually tried to do something with your life instead of working a simple, low-paying 9-to-5 job, I wouldn't have gone looking for someone better. Instead, I'd have to go and find someone who will actually treat me right. Someone who will do what I want and buy me what I want. Oh, yeah, and just barging in on me and Jack like that? Only to throw him out of the house without his clothes? I mean, that was an incredibly horrible thing to do. You don't just do that to people. Molly, I had every right to do that. You were going behind my back in the worst way possible. You're my wife. How could you do that to me? Well, I mean, is it really that difficult to understand why? What do you mean? Ugh, fine. I'll spell it out for you. You are just so incredibly boring and dull. And that would be okay if you had money. 
because then I could go off and entertain myself by going shopping or having spa days or whatever whilst you looked after George. But you're not even rich. I mean, honestly, what kind of idiotic woman would actually want to stay with a penniless, boring loser who can't even afford to buy his wife a diamond necklace just to show that he loves her? And the fact that you have no money means that I'm often having to look after George because we can't afford a nanny. Do you know how tiring that is? And how time consuming? I can't even go and get my nails done anymore because George won't sit still for long enough. I can't deal with it anymore. You really should have seen this coming. If you hate me so much, why'd you bother agreeing to marry me in the first place? Well, I thought that maybe you would rise in the ranks of your job to a high paying position. Then I could have had the lifestyle that I want. So you were literally only with me for the money? Yeah, pretty much. You are seriously unbelievable. After everything I've done for you, I gave up the chance to go traveling and have an adventure simply because you said it would be better to get a job so that we could get a house and settle down. You knew that it was my dream to do that, to see the world. I even asked you to come with me. How's that for spontaneity? Not to mention George. How are we going to explain all of this to him? Well, if I had known that you would just remain a lowly, underpaid loser, I wouldn't have bothered wasting my time being with you. And as for George, he'll come live with me, of course. I am his mother. I don't think so. He's my son too, so if I have to fight you for custody, I will. Well, you'll be for a big fight then. I'll happily take you to court over this. Well then, I guess we'll have to see what happens. Until then, you can move out of my home. I'll keep George here as it's a more stable environment than whatever random guy you end up with. Um, I don't think you're keeping the house. I am. Actually, I'm the one who's been paying the mortgage and all of the bills, so it's actually mine. I don't think so. The courts will definitely side with me on this one, especially considering I'll have custody of George as well. You know, being the woman and all, they won't throw me out onto the streets, especially because I have no job. They'll let me keep the house whilst you continue to pay for it, lol. You really think they'll do that? Yep, my friend Charlotte did the exact same thing as me and she got to keep her husband's house. He's still paying for it now and she gets alimony off of him. It's like the perfect way to have a luxurious lifestyle without having to lift a finger. You're a horrible woman. I can't believe I didn't see it before. All those years trying to please you and make you happy and you couldn't have cared less about me. Do you even care about George at all? Of course I do. Anyway. Let's face it, you're not the brightest crayon in the pack, are you? I've been cheating on you with Joe for at least four months now, and you didn't even notice. It's kind of sad, really. Yep, that's right. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I just thought I'd let you know that I've locked you out of the house, so don't even bother trying to get back in. <laughs> Tough luck. You're not stepping another foot in my house ever again. I'll put your things on the sidewalk at some point. If you want them, you better be quick to get them. You can't do that, especially with George about. George can stay at the house with me. Whatever. I'll be by later to get my things. If you don't let me in, I'll call the police and claim that you're trespassing and squatting in my house. You do remember my friend Zach is in the police, right? Ugh, whatever. Just know that this isn't over. The courts will decide who gets custody of George. Then I'll fight as hard as I can to try and gain full custody on him. He'd be better off with me than with you and whatever man you decided to be with that week. Whatever. I'm going. I'll be by to pick up some of my things in a bit. And you better let me in. Seriously, Molly? You might have won the custody trial, unbelievably, but that doesn't mean you can just waltz into my home whenever you feel like it. Especially with your new boyfriend. The court said that I won, so it's my house, so I get to decide who lives in it and who doesn't. You won the custody hearing, but the house was given to me because I'm the one who's been paying its mortgage. I let you stay there so that you could sort yourself somewhere new to live, and so George had a safe place to stay whilst you got sorted. But instead, you decided to move the very person you cheated on me with into my home? Well, the house should be mine. I don't want to have to go and look for somewhere new. Well, tough. 
I've been patient enough with you. I want you to get all of your things and your boyfriend can get all of his and I want you both out by tomorrow evening. Yeah, that's not going to happen. This is my home and I'm staying right here. It's the least that I'm owed for marrying you. I had hoped that by now you'd have been a rich and successful man who I could have had at least half of the money off of. But you're not. So a house is what I'll have to settle for. Either you need to leave by tomorrow, I can stay at my mom's house tonight, or I'll call the police and have you thrown out. Oh, please. You're just all talk. You won't actually do anything to me because you simply don't have the courage to do so. You'll just moan and whine, but ultimately, I'll win. Because I'm smarter and better than you in every way. I'll even lie if I have to. You know I can fake cry. So I'll just use that and make you look like the bad person. Yeah, keep dreaming. It's not gonna happen. We'll see. Though for now, it looks like you'll have to go back home to mommy and daddy, lol. Well, they're much nicer and kinder than you've ever been, so I don't really see how that's a loss for me. Hey Andrew, how are you holding up? Hey Matthew, it's been difficult, but I finally feel like I'm starting to get back to myself again, you know? I just feel sorry for George mostly. His parents are divorced and now he's got to grow up in a broken home. Not to mention, I hardly get to see him now. Yeah, about that. Is something wrong? Well, I don't know how true it is, but the other day I heard from Angela, my wife's sister and Molly's friend, that apparently George might not actually be yours. What? Like I said, I don't know how true it is, but apparently Molly was at a bar the other week and she was bragging about how she got you paying child support and the child wasn't even yours? She'd apparently cheated on you during your marriage? I, I can't... I, I can't believe it. I mean, I can believe she cheated, but George not being mine? Maybe you could do a DNA test just to make sure? Yeah, maybe. I'm sorry, dude. I didn't want to upset you, but I thought you should know. No, I'm, I'm glad you brought this to my attention. Thank you. Well, if you ever need someone to talk to or any help at all, just let me know. I'll be right here for you. Thank you. I, I might need you soon. Hey, Andrew, Mom's not happy with you. Oh, why is that? Because you've not been paying the correct child support? Um, yes, I have. Well, I was up until a few weeks ago. Well, why'd you stop? Mom says that she needs more money because we can't live off of what you're sending now. Well, she'll just have to get a job then, won't she? Just tell me the reason for not sending the money. Mom blames you for the lack of food. I won't pay any longer. Huh? Look, I'm sorry to tell you this, George, but I'm not going to pay the child support because you're not actually my son. What? What? Th that, that can't be true. I'm afraid it is. Your mom cheated on me during our marriage, and you're the result of that. I even did a DNA test to prove it. But th that's not fair. You've always been my dad. I know, and I would gladly continue being your dad, but I just know that the money I send your mother isn't actually going towards you at all, but whatever she wants. If you'd like, we can try and get the court to grant me custody of you, but I don't know if they would allow it now that I'm not your biological dad. Well, maybe we can try. I miss you, and I hate living with mom. She brings in a new guy, like, every week, and I'm sick of it. I just, I want my life to be normal again. Well, then, we'll definitely see what we can do about that. I just need a little bit of time to sort some things out, okay? Okay, I'll talk to you soon then. So, did George ask why the payments have stopped? And you better have a good reason. Well, the fact that George isn't actually my son should be good enough, right? What? What are you on about? Don't be ridiculous. You can give it up. I know you cheated on me and I know it resulted in George. He's not my biological son, so technically I have no reason to pay child support for him. If you want that, you'll need to ask his father because I'm not giving you another penny. No, that's not fair. You weren't supposed to find that out. 
Maybe next time don't go blabbing about it to everyone you know then. But now that I'm not technically his dad, the courts will side with me and make it so that I don't have to pay child support. That's not fair. I don't care what the courts say. You owe me that child support. I want that money. Well, tough, because you're not getting any of it. Oh, get lost. It's not fair. I never thought you'd actually figure it out. Besides, you looked after him for all this time, so that makes you responsible for him. The court will side with me. I've done my research. According to the judge, you'll actually have to pay me back all the child support money I've given you so far. Otherwise, they'll count it as fraud and you could get into some pretty serious trouble. They... they can't do that. Actually, they can. You... Ugh, I can't believe you've done this to me. It's not fair. Well, I'm afraid that's life. Anyway, I'm gonna go and celebrate. Not only do I not have to pay you a single dollar anymore, but I no longer have to stay married to such a horrible woman. You're someone else's problem now. But now that I've lost the child support, how am I supposed to get money? You'll have to actually get a job, or don't. I don't really care. Anyway, I've got things to do, so I'm gonna go. Keep an eye out for a court summons, because there'll definitely be one over this. I... Wait... I've got nowhere to go, so maybe we can just give our relationship another go? I mean, I could stay at home and we could go to a couples therapy thing. No, 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 no way. I'm really not fussed what you do now, but it for sure won't be staying with me. You show me your true colors and I'm not about to put myself back in that horrible situation. <laughs> I'm done with you, for good. No, you can't do that. Only I can decide if our relationship is over, not you. Well, tough. I've decided that you and I are done. I don't want anything to do with you from this point on. Goodbye, Molly. I hope you have a good life, but it won't be involving me. After that, Molly was summoned to court, but not for the reason she thought. Me and George had put together a plan so that he could stay with me. Luckily, Molly's reckless behavior in bringing random men home helped, as the judge ruled her as putting George's safety at risk. The fact that none of the child support money I'd given her had actually been spent on George, helped as well. George was put into my care, and we're actually living quite happily now. As for Molly, she now has to pay me child support, which I have put away in a savings account for George to have when he's old enough. Last I heard, she had to get a job as a cleaner in order to pay for all of this, as none of her boyfriends would give her any money. I say I felt bad for her, but sometimes you have to face the consequences of your actions.